Her pain is unimaginable. A mother who is forced to look on as her children were murdered at the hands of her own husband is speaking out tonight for the very first time. Because it's like my, my heart is broken. And it's like you try to, you know, I don't know, you try to find stuff to fill it with, but it's just like you still have this big black hole in your heart that's never going to be filled. On September 21st, 2017, Faith Green's life was shattered to pieces. It was that day her husband, Gregory Green, spun into a rage, murdering his two children and two stepchildren inside their Dearborn Heights home. Green's attention then turned to his wife, Faith. She was stabbed and beaten to within inches of her life. Since that day, Faith Green has only spoken publicly in a courtroom addressing the man who took her family from her. But in her first sit down interview, Faith is opening up to our Kimberly Gill about the wounds that time won't heal and why she's so thankful to so many. Kim. Yeah, guys, you're right. And you know, we cover a lot of horrific stories working in the news business. And this is one that has stuck with me and a lot of other people for the past two years. To say that Faith Green is a strong woman is an understatement. In the midst of everything she's been through, when I spoke to her, her biggest concern now is thanking the people who helped her and helping others while keeping her children's memory alive. Deepest sympathy, we love you, Apostles Ter Terrence and Victoria Blunt. Faith Green has tried to read every single one of the hundreds of cards and handwritten letters sent to her during the past two years. Actually, I had to have my family help like read a lot of them because it was hard to, you know, to read them. It's emotional. It's still hard. Um, Life has not so, gotten easier. You know, she lives every had... second with the mental, emotional, and physical scars left by her husband. And she can't stop thinking about her four children. I miss them so much. And it's, it's hard to go on when you see people with their kids and then like, you know, if you have to go to the store, it's like you try to hurry up and pass the clothes because then it's like, oh, I would have bought that for them. And then it's like, even though people may say like, oh, she's smiling, she looks okay. But, you know, really, I'm not. You just, I don't know, you, I got to go on, you know. How are you doing? I mean, we... You mentioned the short-term memory loss. Honestly, um, I have a lot of bad days. Um, my depression has gotten worse. Um, like those, like I used to didn't believe those commercials where they say depression hurts. It it really hurts. There's days I cannot get up. I have to like kind of pep talk myself. Was you know just it's it's a it's a it's a hard day. It's, it's hard. This year is worse than last year. Worse because as time passes, the reality of what happened is slowly sinking in. One of the things that keeps her going is the outpouring of support she's received from all over the world. I did write something to, um, to tell everybody. Um, I'm sorry. Take your time. Take your time. I just wanted to take this time out to say thank you to everyone that donated in any way to help my family and I during the, during the tragedy we've gone through. So many people wrote letters, sent flowers, visited me, and prepared food. Well, you, you couldn't possibly um, write everybody back that no, wrote you. No, I wanted to, but it was just... Every time I thought about it, I'm just like, oh my God, it's, you know, it's, it's, over, it's, over, it's overwhelming. And I didn't want people to think like I forgot about them or, you know, because they reached out to me and helped me. As she tries to heal, her focus is also on helping others. She's holding a memorial this Sunday in honor of her children. It's a celebration where she's also raising money for scholarships. I hope that it helps somebody else that lost a child, you know, whether it's to murder or disease. It's, when you lose a child, I, it's, it's, I can't even explain it. Once you're a mom and you give birth, that connection and it's, it's a hard thing to deal with. It's very hard, whether it's one, whether it's four, it's, it's, it's very hard. 
you know, and it's like, I, I don't know if you ever really come to the, the realization of it. She is an incredibly strong woman, and as I said, she wants to help others. So here's more information about the memorial celebration that's happening this Sunday. It's going to be in Dearborn Heights at OW Best Middle School. Uh, it starts at 1 p.m. It goes till 4. Uh, there will be music, a bounce house, giveaways, and light refreshments, and you can donate to that scholarship fund uh, in her children's name through the Faith Foundation PayPal account. We've put a link to that information on our website at clickondetroit.com, but just... Oh. I know, I know, yeah. I know. I it's mean, touching. nobody can imagine what she's gone through. It's amazing that she's even concerned with thanking people who've reached out. You're right, you're right. And, and speaking of thanking people, there were specific people that she wanted to thank, but because of the trauma that, and everything that she's gone through and everything that's happened, she, she has short-term memory loss and she couldn't remember a lot of the names of the people. For instance, she wanted to thank one of the responding officers. She couldn't remember his name, the person that donated the plot and the dresses for her youngest oh. girls uh, for the funeral. Uh, we've put the entire link uh, to the video of her thank you letter on our website. So if you'd like to listen to that, we put that there in addition to all the other things about the event that's happening on yeah. Sunday. So yeah. Thank you, Kim. Yeah, sure. Uh.